So I was trying to be just a little bit arty with this start intro of the video, you know, with a bit of brass scattered here and there. Do you reckon it works? No, no, I don't think so either. <laughs> Hi guys, this is Rack and Load and welcome to the channel. This is a full Rack and Load review of the very new Weatherby Mark V Accumark Pro. Yeah. I think I've got all that right. Just read the title. Um, <laughs> well, it is a very, very nice rifle. It certainly is. Now, this is just some of the brass from the rounds that I have pushed through this rifle. I have not had this rifle long. I don't like it when I've not had a rifle long, when I've got to rush through it. Because it's new, um, I've you know, I've had this kindly on loan from Ray Trade here in the UK. So I've had to sort of really push this review through. So literally, I think the barrel's cooled down. And oh my God, did I get this thing hot. Not really designed to get red art. It's a hunter, you know. So it's a little bit, I don't know. Um, my testing probably won't really apply to a hunter, for example, who will probably take two or three shots at most on a stalk possibly. You know, I pushed probably, I've got another bag full of this ammo, or well, this brass, I pushed about 60 rounds through this. By which time, 300 wind mag, by the way, guys, I had had enough, okay? Um, because it's a little bit jumpy, although not as bad as I thought it would be with its lightweight, weighing in at just 7.9 pounds. A little bit more with the scope, but uh, let's just clear this brass. Let's just clear the brass and we'll get stuck in. Yes, I'll tidy it up in a minute. Now, watch me slip over in a minute and come crashing through the rack table because I'm actually standing on all this brass now. I'll get one of the, uh, the rack cave minions to tidy that up. Right then, so the weather... The Weatherby Pro Accumark carbon fiber. Doesn't it look stunning? It really does. Let me give you some close ups. It's a little long, uh, it's 47 and a quarter inches overall. Like I said, weighing in at uh, 7.9 pounds, 26 inch barrel on this one. You have got a magazine which will take three rounds, okay? Non-detachable magazine, just floor plate. Really, really good. Dead easy to load. I mean, these big, these big rounds, these 300 win mag, let me just grab, grab one. I need one now, I've thrown them all on the floor. They are pretty large, aren't they? They pretty are a lot, but they are pretty large. So let me get rid of that. Um, yeah, so pretty easy to load. The bolt throw on this is one of the shortest, should I say shortest? Shortest as in degrees, uh, 54 degree bolt throw on this thing. Let me just demonstrate. That's it, that's as high as it is going, okay? 54 degrees, that is pretty good. <laughs> well, it's the, it is the shortest bolt throw on a rifle to date, okay? So, Weatherby. Now, have I got much experience with Weatherby rifles? I think I fired one years ago, a hunting rifle, years and years ago when I was like 16 or something. And yeah, that's going back quite a while. Yeah, I know, all right. Um, but, you know, since then, not really been my cup of tea. You know, hunting rifles, I tend to steer away from like the, the wooden guns, it's not really a more sort of target stroke tactical. You know, it's just, that's the sort of stuff that I do, I guess. Um, I've done the odd hunting rifle. It's like over and under shotguns, you know, it's, or traditional, traditional shotguns. But this really has blown my skirt up. I really do like it. Not a caliber I'd probably choose, you know, with, for target shooting, 300 wind mag. I know a lot of people do. Um, not for me, not when there's new 
Uh, very interesting um, calibers coming out, like the 6.5 PRC, for example. I know it's it's not a Magnum caliber like what this is, but you know, for target shooting, this is this is more of a hunting gun. Right. So enough about me just waffling on. So let me just throw out some specs. I've already thrown a few out anyway. So 26 inch barrel, fluted, cerakoted barrel. You have the AccuBrake on here. And boy, do you know when you've got that thing on. I really should have canned this to be fair. Uh, yeah, that really does make a bit of noise. And I was shooting prone and trust me, I've not long got back from the range and I think I've still got dust and bits of grass in my hair where this thing was just throwing up everything around me that was on the ground. It <laughs> there really was a bit of um, bit of pressure coming out of that uh, that little break there, but very effective, nonetheless. But you know, it's it's just a little noisy. Ideally, I mean, if you if you were using this as a hunting rifle, which no doubt you will be, uh, you've got to can it up, and yeah, you really have. You could afford those extra ounces with a can because this carbon fiber stock just literally shaves pounds off this rifle. You know, if this was in like a laminate stock, for example, or just like a normal synthetic stock, this thing would weigh a lot more. It really would. So, right, taking it from the recoil pad end, okay. I'm gonna, don't worry, I've not forgot about the specs. I'm gonna sort of chuck them in as we go. So ambidextrous stock, soft real recoil pad, which you pretty much need with 300 win mag. You know, it is a little bumpy. Although, like I said, this was quite comfortable to shoot. It really was. I think it was the noise and all the uh, crap landing on me after I'd taken the shot, which was probably more off-putting than the actual recoil. Um, sling swivel stud as standard there. You know, that goes without saying, doesn't it, on a, on a hunting rifle. Um, double uh, sling studs there. You know, one for a bipod, one for an actual sling. And then you've got a bit of a, a stock hook there so you can pull this thing into your... Uh, depending on what you're shooting off, you know, what your position is, you can utilise that. Found it really comfortable, me being the lefty as well, I had no issues whatsoever. Pistol grip, really, really nice, really fat, does the job. Doesn't this carbon fibre look really, really nice? It really does look good. And they've done like this camouflage on there. That, again, looks really nice. Good idea doing that because, you know, you know sometimes with carbon fibre, when you it doesn't quite go to plan. And, you know, even on professional carbon fiber, carbon, carbon fibering, should I say, there's sometimes a few iffy little bits, but good idea where they've got a bit of camo, you know, you never know, they might've just covered up those little niggly bits. I'm not saying that really, Weatherby, I'm kind of kidding, but, you know, it's, a, it's an option, isn't it? You know, if you've got a bit of a, bit of a wobble on your carbon fiber, do you scrap the stock or do you just throw a bit of camo over it and just hide the worst bits? Anyway, God, I'm sorry guys, you could probably hear the brass that I'm walking on in a minute. I'm sort of, it's like I'm standing on marbles. So no, the stock is stunning. It really is stunning. So, so light, very comfortable, wide on the fore, fore grip as well, fore end. I love these uh, sort of chamfered off edges here to really sort of, uh, you know, just make it comfortable. Would you have sort of any sort of traction on there? You don't really need it, do you? It's pretty grippy enough anyway, the carbon fiber is. It's not that real sort of glossy finish. It, it has got a little bit of texture. I don't know if you can sort of see that in the light. That camo finish is, offers a bit of texture. Okay. The barrel, like I said, is uh, 26 inches fluted, cerakoted as well, which is excellent. So you've basically got um, a stock that is, you know, the environment isn't gonna affect it. 
and the Cerakote is just bomb proof. I love Cerakote. It's the way things are going now. Uh, it's just, you know, it ain't going to corrode. It doesn't matter if you get wet. It doesn't matter if you leave it wet. Nothing is going to get through it and it's dead, dead hard to scratch as well. So I really love that. That is in, I believe, the tungsten uh, coloration. So really nice. I did get this thing pretty hot, guys. Like I said, this is a hunting rifle. It's brand new. This one had never been shot before. In fact, I've still got the label off it. I had to cut the label off it. Let me just grab it. I'm going to the other end of the rat cave, guys. One sec. So I had to cut the label off it. So this is a brand new rifle. So obviously, um, it hasn't been worn in. You know, it hasn't been ran in or anything. I wasn't... I wasn't using the best ammo, okay? I'll show you what I was using. And I'm not going to show you a target. Well, all right, I'll roll in footage of a target. Not great, the ammo I was using, okay? Um, Weatherby say on their site, uh, sub MOA guaranteed, but that's with their ammunition. You know, they don't really give the specifics of their ammunition, but I didn't even so. I've got some Weatherby ammunition, I would have, but I was just running cheap and cheerful stuff. You know, this is an expensive channel to run, guys. So, I was running some PPU, that was 145 grain, okay? So I sort of just broke it in a little bit with that, chucked that through. And then I was using some Federal, uh, what's this? This is 180 grain, soft points. So I was running that. I've still got some of those left. I've chugged through uh, another box of those as well. So that's the Federal Soft Points. Um, it seemed to like them, but I don't know. I think it was because it was, get, it was a hot day. Still is a hot day out there. It was getting warm, this rifle was, you know, and I was time sort of stricken, if that's a word. So. I was just pumping rounds through it, just seeing how it, seeing how it fared. And I was using Federal uh, Gold Medal as well. Um, that seemed pretty good as well. Like I said, I think I was just getting it a bit too hot. You know, the gun needed running in, brand new one. Usually when I get a demo rifle, it's already had loads of, you know, ammo through it anyway. So it's kind of bedded in, you know, the barrels, broken and it's it's virtually there so yeah i'm putting i'm putting my excuses out there like i said if i had had their actual ammo you know and probably just gave it a bit of time after each shot probably would have got better results better results but i was getting uh i don't know a couple of inch couple of inch moa Couple, well, a couple of that don't make sense. A couple of inches, okay? A couple of inch spread, maybe three inch spread. But I think it was just a, hot, a real hot gun. You know, I didn't really let it cool down. So I'm not going to really throw out, you know, show your paper because it's not it's not fair on the gun, if that makes sense. It's, it's not fair on the rifle because it, it won't do it justice. So unless, ideally, I need to be in an absolute sort of controlled environment i bet you weatherby when they test their guns it's you know it's not in the wind on a real hot day you know loads of mirage you know environmental issues i bet they did it on a range you know all clumped down so there you go there you go just looking through uh, the tags that were on this rifle so yeah the the accubrake um yeah that covers the shooter in crap if you're shooting prone um, yeah, I'm just reading that. Yeah, okay. Reduced felt recoil up to 53%. Well, I didn't take it off to sort of see that was true, but uh, my shoulder had had enough, uh, to be fair. Serico, carbon fiber stock. What else we got in here? Trigger tech. Ah, the trigger tech. Let me, trigger tech trigger. Let me tell you a little bit that, about that. So basically everything is stainless steel inside the trigger okay so nothing really can wear out so it's really you know really um a precise trigger in fact i think let's move this ammo out of the way because it makes me nervous 
especially when I'm doing trigger pulls. I know it's totally empty and I'm totally safe, but you know, it just, just feels wrong, doesn't it? That was a single stage trigger, okay? So it's it's a real light trigger. I will pull it in a minute. Sub aware MOA, so here we go, lot. So Mark V rifles are guaranteed to shoot three shot group of 0.99 of an inch or less at 100 yards, sub MOA, when used with whether be factory or premium ammunition. Of course it is. It ain't gonna work on Federal, is it? Or PPU or the crap that I push through it. But no, like I said, that wouldn't be fair on the rifle showing you a target, a brand new rifle using not the best ammo. It just wouldn't, so. Anyway, moving along from, where did we get to? We got to about the pistol grip. Um, yeah, 54 degree bolt throw. I love that, you know, so if you're running like night vision or anything like that, that's gonna be bulky here, that bolt ain't gonna get in the way of it. And talking of the bolt, let's just take it out. Now that's why, if you was wondering, that why that bit there is recessed, it is to actually take the bolt out. Check out this bolt, fluted, cerakoted on the end. I think that is cerakote as well, where they've, uh, I forget the coloration of it. I think it's uh, carbon or something. I forget what they call it. Oh, it has got a bit of carbon on it as well. Getting dirty. Love the way these rifles lock up. Look at the lugs there. Get my camera in focus. Uh, all you have to do to take down this rifle or to take the bolt out is just draw the bolt back, pull the trigger, keep your fing finger depressing the trigger and the bolt just comes straight out. So nice heavy bolt, that is just pure quality. You can, you know, you cannot doubt the quality of this rifle, uh, especially when you look at the bolt. Uh, ejection. Absolutely no problems whatsoever. Oh God. <gasps> God. Ray Tree, don't don't watch me while I do this, else I'll be getting a bill. Just have to <laughs> just have to pull the trigger to put the bolt back in. Yeah, no problems with ejection, you know, them big uh, cases, it was pulling them out. No trouble whatsoever. The floor plate here, you could press this button here. And that opens the magazine floor plate. So if ever you had a problem, you know, jammed up rounds or anything like that, um, it's the, the button is there. Ooh. And that disengages the floor plate to open everything up. So there is your magazine. Okay. Just in case you had a malfunction, not that you would. I'd find it hard to believe that you would on a rifle of this quality, but it happens, it does happen. Um, Picatinny rail on this rifle, will that float everyone's boat? Uh, yeah, I think it will. Um, if this was a, you know, a wooden stocked, um, you know, real sort of hunting rifle, you know, traditional, like an older Weatherby, then yeah, but I think it all flows really well with the carbon fiber stock. So it's all, it's all just, um, what's the word? Uh, contemporary, isn't it? So it all just flows really, really well. Picatinny rail, I mean, I think that has got 20 MOA built in. It doesn't say, but it does look like it is sloping quite a little bit. So it's, mm, it looks like it's got 20 MOA built in it. If you're interested, I was running a Hawk on this. I think it was a Hawk Sidewinder, uh, first focal plane. Not a bad little scope. Yes, there are loads better, but I'm testing a lot of Hawks at the minute, just running them on everything from air rifles to center fire. So this thing has been on like a 177 brake barrel air rifle and 300 wind mag, so it's pretty cool. Just showing the versatility of uh, Hawk scopes. Um, but yeah, loving the bolt, uh, no problems. I had no issues on the, what, I think it was about, I had some older, um, I reckon I've run about 70, 70 rounds through this, maybe even 80. Don't know, I didn't count all the brass. 
So that wasn't all the brass on the table at the start of the video, by the way, guys. Lockup is solid, okay? Safety um, is pretty quiet as well. Uh, it won't operate now, I've, um, oh, it will. So the safety is pretty quiet. So if obviously you flick it up, you know, like that, it'll be a, a bit noisy, but if you just push it up gently, you can be pretty silent with it. That's your safety catch right there. Like that, no problems with that whatsoever. Um, aluminium trigger guard there, at least I think it is. Let's magnet test it, yep. Yeah. Steel um, receivers on this, I think, well, I say that, I'm sure I've read where it says uh, there's a bit of titanium in this uh, rifle as well. But there's a magnet sticking to that, so I'm guessing that is a steel action. Unless titanium's magnetic. Maybe it is, I don't know. I don't know. Um, right, let's give this thing a trigger pull because I know people are wanting to know this. So let's throw in trigger pull. Just see what it's doing. It felt pretty damn light. Um, not too light though it just felt felt good you know not sort of dangerously light or anything like that um with it being just a um like a single stage thing so right let's give it a pull stand by oh that didn't work, did it? Three pounds, eight and a half ounces. We'll call it eight and a half ounces. Nice trigger, really nice trigger. Metal blade on there. No problems with the trigger, no problems with the bolt. No problems whatsoever, apart from the crappy ammo I was using, more than likely. Weatherby's logo on the underside of the trigger there. There's the floor plate. All the metal bits on here are Cerakoted, which is really excellent. This thing would just, you know, you could, you could leave it at the bottom of the sea and it'd be perfectly fine. Be fine. But, oh my God, that, that muzzle breaks. Seriously, seriously. A little bit, little bit uh, loud. So, but no, a stunning rifle. Like I said, I had no problems with it. It was a pleasure to shoot, although we were a little bit punchy being in 300 wind mag and that, that naughty, naughty muzzle break. I don't think, to be fair, if you're gonna be using this as a hunting rifle, that's gonna come off, isn't it? Okay, it is. Five eighths by 24 thread on that, by the way. So you can can this thing, you know, throw on a wild cat. You know, that's the way forward, isn't it? A British made wild cat. Say no more. Um, so yeah, you wouldn't really use that. It's gonna annoy people at the range and it's gonna scare everything off within like 10 square miles anyway, if you're hunting with it. So can it. That's all I'm going to say, can it? But no, what a stunning rifle, really, really nice. I just love the carbon fiber. I love the way sort of carbon fiber is making its appearance more and more uh, in the shooting world. You know, I've just done a Benelli 828U uh, over under shotgun, that had a bit of carbon fiber on. You know, the Seiko's, uh, Seiko Carbon Wolf, you know, one of those uh, is coming on the channel very soon by the way that's all carbon just i'm liking it and the same with Cerakote as well you just cannot cannot fault all these new materials and all these you know gucci coatings and stuff where are we going to be in another 10 years you know and i think weatherby I, I don't know i think with them being a traditional gun maker rifle maker i think they kind of 
we're gambling a little bit, sort of just jumping into the more sort of modern, can I say modern? No, that's kind of rude. Do I say, no, you know what I mean? They sort of just jumped into, oh, they've updated, haven't they? They've updated with some updated rifles, you know, that are a little bit more appealing to, dare I say, the younger shooter or the new generation of shooters. Yeah, that sounds better. And I think they've really hit the nail on the head with the materials they've used. I mean, I've seen and I've held in the flesh and there will be on the channel other models. They do the Meat Eater, which has got a cool name straight away. It's got Meat Eater written on the bottom of the floor plate. You've got a carbon fiber wrapped um, uh, barrels on some of their models. Uh, I'll roll in footage of their website, some of the different models. Just some really, really nice stuff uh, coming out. You know, it's really, really good that a traditional rifle maker is, you know, has updated themselves, reinvented themselves and come out with some real cool stuff. And I think they'll do really well out of it. I really do think they will. But no, what a stunning rifle. This thing has been a pleasure to shoot. Apart from the break, I've already said that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I'm dead impressed with it. I'm dead impressed with it. It's a shame that I've had to rush this review, to be fair. Um, and well, I've not rushed it, but you know, I just wanted to sort of get it out there. Um, and I've not got this rifle for for long, which, by the way, like I said, is kindly on loan from Ray Trade here in the UK. But wow, really, really nice. I do like the straight pistol grip on there as well. So it's it's more of a, it's kind of like a target stock, isn't it, on this? But lightweight and in a magnum caliber for for deer. So it's it's a cross between a target and a. A hunting rifle, I think, in my opinion, anyway. But, but yeah, very, very interesting. 13 and a half inch length of pull, by the way. One in 10 twist, forgot to mention. I've already talked about the barrel. Just looking at my notes, they keep glaring at me. So, yeah, just a, a very, very cool, cool rifle. So, yeah, there you go. Have I shown you the other side? I think I have. Oh, is, this is one of those rifles that I just love holding up to the camera because it's so light and it just looks so good. Weatherby's logo on the left hand side there. I've got to watch where I'm pointing this else I'm going to not call my lights down. Just totally cool. The bolt knob itself is pretty slender. It's not too, not too hefty. Um, we're not touched on the bolt knob. Not too hefty. Not too big, it's just right. You know, even if you was wearing gloves, that'd feel all right. Doesn't, does it need to be any bigger? No, not really. I don't think so. So, you know, really cool. Really, really cool, cool rifle. Anyway, guys, I am gonna leave it at that because I'm actually just gonna sort of put up for another 10 minutes of me just saying how good this rifle is and I really, really do love it. I really do love it. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that. The Weatherby Accumark Mark V. Probably said that the wrong way around. The Mark V Accumark, that sounds better. Really, really nice. I'm gonna leave it at that. That's where I can load. Thanks for watching guys. See ya.